International Incident Number Two. Jack Packard returned to London immediately for urgent assignment over Saudi Arabia. Signed the 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park. I love adventure. The American Broadcasting Company presents a new Carlton E. Morse production featuring the international escapades of Jack, Doc, and Reggie. Tonight's incident is entitled... The Great Airmail Robbery. All out, please. Piccadilly Station. All out, please. Cab, mister. Cab, lady. All right, cabby. Cab. All right, yes. Take your luggage. Thanks. Right inside of you. You're getting every bit of luggage, sir. Yeah, my extra suit of heavy underwear. Do tell. There. Ten Gramercy Park. Ten Gramercy Park it is. Here we are, mister. A bit of an old heap of ancient history, if you ask me. Oh, you're familiar with 10 Gramercy Park, are you? Who oh, ain't? It's been standing there since the beginning of time. All through the war, the Nazi Huns dropped their explosives like a bloody snowstorm. And people's houses was a-popping and a-bursting like paper bags. But not one of them stingers ever come near 10 Gramercy Park. Had the good luck sign on it, huh? Yeah, it's more than that, if you want my opinion. Oh, thank you, mister. Well, all right. Keep the change. You're a scholar and a gent. Should I rustle your luggage up the steps? No, I'll take it, thanks. Good going, mister. Oh, hello. Major Jack Packard. That's right. Right into the great reception hall, if you will, please. Right ahead, sir. Yeah, I was here before. Very good, sir. Again, the awesome beauty of this cathedral-like room gives me a feeling of standing in the midst of solemn, reverent things. The ceiling lost in the upper gloom, three stories above. Great leaded windows showing the color and pageantry of the Crusades, King Arthur's Court, Charlemagne, the signing of the Magna Carta, all the history of the civilized world. And there on the giant tapestries are woven still more of the biography of human life. And the fabulous carpets on the floor and the period furniture. This reception room, this waiting room at 10 Gramercy Park was certainly designed to give interviewers the greatest respect for the 21 old men. The trap tapestry across the west wall is still drawn, hiding the great mirror. Hello. And they have company, apparently. I... Reggie! Reggie York! I say, who... Why, Jack Packard! What can I say of all the jolly meetings? Well, but where did you drop from? I might ask you the same thing. <laughs> oh, look here, this is the best ever. Begging your pardon, <laughs> but will you go inside and close the door? Yes, yeah, sorry, old boy. What? What? Jeff, what is this? A bit of a monastery, what? Well, never mind this room for now. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Where have you been since the war? What have you been doing? Well, sales tap, is the A1 detective agency still running out in Hollywood, California? Yeah, the A1 detective agency is dead history. Will you answer... Well, what about Doc Long? Look here, isn't Doc with you? I don't know where Doc is. He disappeared out in the Orient after the war. I... Missing in action? No, just dropped out of sight. Same way you did, you no-account English renegade. <laughs> what do you mean by it, anyway? Oh, look here, isn't this a bit of the best? Well, we only had Doc with Let's us. Look will you come? Calm down and answer some questions before the Inquisition. Inquisition? Yeah. You see that great tapestry on the west wall? I do. Presently, that'll be drawn back to reveal the largest mirror you ever saw. Covers that complete wall. At least 40 by 60 feet. But what's it all about? Well, it's only a mirror on this side. 
Behind the glass is a room where the 21 old men sit to interview us. I say, there, there really are 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park? I guarantee it. From their side, the glass wall is a window. Oh, uh-huh. so they look at us and we're a couple of blind mice, is that it? Yeah, something like that. Well, I'll say this, you know more about it, what we're up against than I do. Just what do you know? Hardly anything. I got this wireless out in the midst of the Gobi Desert. What in blazes are you doing in the Gobi Desert? <laughs> Keeping off the desert tribes who thirsted for infidel blood while an old chappy with long whiskers looked for dinosaur eggs. Here, look at the radio message. Read it. Mm. Sergeant Reginald York, you are herewith summoned to London in the name of peace and goodwill for the purpose of combating those who would pilfer and murder in the midst of today's utter chaos. Signed, 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park. <laughs> a bit like being called to arms, well. Matter of fact, I felt a bit like Sir Lancelot, riding out to save beauty and goodness and perhaps recover the Holy Grail. Huh. Surprised you took a message like this seriously. Mm-hmm. I showed it to the old professor with the whiskers and asked him how balmy a man could get. <laughs> I thought it was a bit of a joke. Yeah. But the old man knew something. He grabbed me by the arm and hustled me into his tent and paid me off in full and... Called the camel boy, had me on the way to the nearest airport some 200 miles away before I knew which end was up. Yeah, I had a similar experience. I went... Uh-oh. Joe, they're pulling the tapestry back. Can you hear us? Yeah, we'll be able to talk back and forth. This is my second assignment. <laughs> if only Doc were here, he'd love this. Major Jack Packard and Sergeant Reginald York, it gives the 21 old men extreme pleasure to bring two such old friends together again. And now, if you'll only dig up Doc Long for us, we'll be complete. Yes, we know about your Texas friend. We have been looking into the matter. However, leaving friendship apart, we have summoned Sergeant York to work with you on the next assignment. Because, beyond a doubt, it's a two-man operation. Dr. Pactan from India will give you your assignment. Twice within the last six months, the London Bombay 100 passenger airliner has been robbed in midair. Two. As you are aware, this giant air cruiser not only carries 30 cabin passengers and 70 second and third class passengers, but delivers the bulk of mail and first class freight between the English Commonwealth and my country. On the two occasions of these villainous attacks in midair, the aircraft was carrying riches of unnamed value. Because what do you mean, robbed in midair? A plane appeared out of nowhere. A shot was fired across the airliner's nose, and radio communications ordered the craft to be slowed to minimum cruising speed. A top escape hatch was ordered open, and all passengers and crew members were ordered to remain in their cabins or seats or at their post, on pain of having the craft blown to bits in midair. This was done? On both occasions, this was done. A rope ladder was lowered from the pirate plane. Two men dressed in black, leather jackets, and trousers with leather hoods and goggles came down the ladder into the liner, robbed the mail sacks, and then stripped the passengers of money and jewelry. True. The men escaped back up through the hatch to their own plane, huh? That is true. Your assignment is to take tonight's trip out on the London-Bombay plane, which is again carrying a sensationally rich cargo. <laughs> I see. A bit of all right. You will capture the two men who descend from the enemy plane. You will don their attire and return to the pirate ship in their stead. Wouldn't you like it just as well if we mounted a cannon on the airliner and blew them out of the sky? No, we must have that plane. It is of an unknown design, and it is our opinion that it is from some base or headquarters of far greater concern to the world than simply air piracy. We want the plane whole, the men alive, and such papers as they have aboard carefully preserved. Well, we'll do what we can. You will do better than that. This malignancy must be dealt with at its very source. Jack, talk about your luxury liner. If I didn't know differently, I'd think our quarters were a drawing room on the Super Chief out of Hollywood. Yeah, not bad. Regular three-quarter beds and plumbing facilities right out of tomorrow. 
Oh, Joe, here's a button I haven't pressed yet. Hey, Reggie. Hmm? Nothing seems to be... Oh, I say. <laughs> Will you listen to that? Ah. You turned on the radio. <laughs> Horace Heights down to the Blue Danube but 23,000 feet in the air over Saudi Arabia. <laughs> If only Doc could be here with all his Texas boy amazement. Well, we're riding first class. This is the cabin deck. Don't worry about the steerage passengers, old boy. I was down there an hour ago checking with the co-pilot. Steerage passengers doing all right, huh? Millionaires have been traveling back and forth across the United States by air for the past ten years with less. Well, if you're ready. Hello. Who's that? I'll see. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Well, hello. You lost? Not in the least. May I come into your cabin, please? I say, do that. Just a minute, I... I was just saying to Jack, we have everything a man might ask for here in this cabin, but a beautiful girl. <laughs> uh, may I take a wrap? You're a forward young man, Mr. York. I am. You are. Making like a wolf. And I doubt if you even know my name. <laughs> but I say, you asked to come in. You know, you know who I am, don't you, Mr. Packard? Yeah. Miss Judy Roberts. You won a British beauty contest, and this trip on the London Bombay Air Express is part of your reward. Oh, of course. You're the special guest of the pilot of this belly dreadnought. I saw you at his table at lunch. Good. Then it's worked. Even you two gents have been fooled. Oh, now, look here. Will I... you say that again? The 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park didn't give even you a tip-off. 21? Then you are one of us? That's right. A little thing your size. A little dame is pretty. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Where did that gun come from? All right. So I'm a pretty little dame, so I'm pint-sized. I'll still come in pretty handy with a stinger of this sort in case of a tie, don't you think? Yes. Ruddy gun woman. Uh, put it away, Judy. We believe you. We just don't understand the need for reinforcement. <laughs> I'm your secondary defense in case of surprise tactics. The 21 old men decided on me at the last minute, just in case there might happen to be someone connected with the enemy who rides this ship as a passenger. In other words, Reggie and I will be able to cope with the two pirates who come down the ladder from the attacking ship. But we might need help if there are members of the gang planted in the passenger list. Quite right. The girl at our back guarding against the assassin's knife. Furthermore, if there are agents on the passenger list, they are to be taken also. But why a girl? A girl's just right. There are gangsters on board. They're going to be on watch for government undercover men. They'll examine every male passenger with suspicion, but who's going to give a second thought to anything as dainty and feminine as duty here? <laughs> you can take me to the cocktail lounge and buy me a cold pink drink with bubbly beads on top for those kind words. <laughs> Shut off the radio, Reggie. Right, huh? Oh, before we go out, there's one thing. Yeah. You've made all the necessary arrangements with the pilot. All set. <sighs> then I guess there's nothing else. After making so blooming many arrangements, the Jolly Roger of the Stratosphere will probably shun us like false teeth in a soup plate. He's not supposed to know a trap's been laid. He'll strike this time if he ever intends to strike again. We got a payload that'd come close to breaking the Bank of England if it were to be lost. Really? Oh, uh, uh, I didn't know that. But why? I mean to say there are other ways of shipping precious cargo. It's done on purpose. Tempt our pirates. Make the bait so alluring it can't be resisted. Well, shall we go to the cocktail lounge? Oh, yes, please. How far are we from the place we should expect to take? Hey, Reggie, Reggie. Hmm? Keep your voice down in the corridor. You got the key? Quiet. Okay, lead off, Judy. <laughs> They don't waste much space on corridors in these airplanes. Who spends any time in corridors? <laughs> Here we go up forward to the lounge. Live music this afternoon, cocktail lounge. Well filled, lounge. Oh, but they're so quiet. <laughs> Overawed at sitting in a modern lounge and sipping a cocktail at 23,000 feet. <laughs> Perhaps it's the pressurized cabin that makes them so restrained, huh? Oh, and it is good music. Well, it is at that. Mademoiselle, monsieur, please to come this way if you will. Thank you. Come along, Judy. Uh, 
this will be convenient? Good. Me, I am. Oh, thank you, Mr. York. Your order, s'il vous plaît. Is Robert? A pink lady, please. Wait. A martini, very dry. Four to one. Uh, this is our formula, monsieur. Good. Reggie, a glass of milk. I beg monsieur's pardon. A glass of milk, all right. Don't give me that glass, Esther. With perhaps an egg and a jigger of sherry? One glass of milk just as it came out of the cow. No doctoring. A patron of the cow. One meets the strangest people in the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> you don't suppose I've offended the poor fellow, do you? <laughs> oh. Hello. Our entertainer is a versatile fellow. First the piano, now the electric organ. Those things can be awful. Oh, look at cats screeching on the back fence. And then I have heard it played. It's sweet as milk and honey. I wonder which... Oh, listen to this. Oh, not bad, not bad. Oh, waiter. We oui, must The drinks will be here in just a few moments. No, please. Uh, where is the powder room? Uh, powder room uh, to the back of the lounge. First door to the left. Thank you. Will you gentlemen excuse me? Oh, no. Don't get up. Pleasure. Thank you. I'll be back before the drinks get here. Jack, what are your manners? Sit down, Reggie. Joe, do you usually get up when a lady leaves the table? Who said Judy Roberts was a lady? Oh, I say. Don't stand there with your mouth open. Sit down. Oh, the man lost his wits. Listen to me, Reggie. I think I know who the enemy agents are aboard this ship. You do? Are you blind? Apparently I am. You didn't see the expression on the piano player's face when Judy came in with us? Sorry, I don't use my eyes half so well in the fist. Oh, look here. Use it, yes. Never mind. She's coming back. Oh. I see there is something between those two. You saw something? Oh, didn't you see a right Never hand? mind, never mind now. What new drink, kid? Oh, thank you, Mr. York. Oh, sure. No. Ah! Say, we're slowing down. Shove down the brakes fast. Hey, listen. Oh, listen. Quiet, please. That's must be it. Can't see another plane from here. Don't get up, Reggie. Flash ahead and we ought to go forward, Jack. Contact the pilot. It's all arranged. The pilot's going to open the hatch directly over the cocktail lounge. What do you want me to do? Turn around. Turn facing the full length of the lounge. That will put my back to you, Mr. York. Exactly. If you wish. Reggie, you know where to keep your eyes. I know. That piano player. Reggie, that man at the third table, he's got a revolver out. Point it in this direction. Piano player shot him. Of course, you idiot. The piano player and I are on your team. Look out! Well, you got that second one, Jack. You laid him out for good. We certainly scared the patrons. Boy, everybody making himself as small as possible. All right, all you people. Stay right where you are. Not a sound out of you. This is an airmail robbery. Somebody take care of that woman. Shut her up. Listen. You can hear the pirate plane. They're coming in to drop their men for the robbery. Yes. You can see them out the window. Two men swinging on the ladder below their plane. Sure. Such acrobatics. That's what we'll be doing in ten minutes from now if everything clicks. Oh, they're... They're out of sight. They're coming directly over. The pilots released the hatch door right overhead. All they got to do is push it back and drop down in. You think they'll come in until they're sure it's safe? Can't tell. Listen. Oh. Oh, we've landed. They've been landed. Now the plane's circling the oh, liner. I want to go back to London. Let me out of here. Keep that woman I quiet. Who is here? We're doing our best. Listen. Two desperate men are going to drop in from the hatch in the roof in a minute. Everybody keep still and out of the way. Reggie, you and I'll jump them the minute they hit the floor. With pleasure. I'll take the first one, you take the second. The hatch is open. Listen. But there's a situation in the cabin. Oh, now what do we say? They're being cagey. Let me answer. I am talking for Honor Ryan Pascal. They say, come down quick. Who are you? I am girlfriend of Honor Ryan Pascal. They have two government undercover men trapped in private cabin. They tell me for you to come quick. It is safe. You would better be telling the truth. Good girl. Two men are being killed. Hurry! Hurry! We are coming down. Get set, Reggie. But don't grab the first one until the second one swings down so I can get him too. Right. 
Here he comes. Hold it! Hold it! Do not wait! You're coming! Hold it, hold it. Now get them both. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I got my man. How about you, Dick? One more, sir. Get back, everybody. Get back. That takes care of that. With true artistry. Judy, you and your piano play a police this room while Reggie and I strip these babies of their black leather uniforms and paraphernalia. You're going to put them on? We're going to let that pirate plane pick us up. Oh, it's insane. If they can do acrobatics on a rope ladder from a plane, why can't we? Oh, please, it's murder. Not at all. I always wondered how I'd look hanging from a rope. Everything's checked. Hold them again, Judy. Safety belts. Check, matter. Parachutes. Check, check. Two diplomatic pouches stuffed with the alleged mail robbery loot. <laughs> the list is good. Yeah, we each have a pouch. Holsters, ammunition, shoulder gun. Until I feel like a belly arsenal. Well, that's how they came, so that's how we got to go back. If they spot you on the ladder... How can they? We're dressed exactly like their two men. Our pressure mass will protect our faces until we're hauled up. Yes, come on, Jack. Heat me up through the hair, sir. Our timing's perfect, according to the prisoner with a battered nose. All right, step in my hand. Yes. Up you go. Right up. I hold myself up. There. All right, one of you men step over and give me a heave up. You, waiter with the accent. Give me a hand. Oh, but we oui, must, sure. Thanks. Uh, here. Easy, easy. There you go. Now then. There you are. Oh. Come on up, Lieutenant. Well, I gave the pirate ship a wave. We're coming around. Close the hatch. Goodbye, boys. I love you two guys. Goodbye. Well, didn't take the enemy plane long to get into position behind us. Watch it, Dick. Here she comes. We're both going to have to grab the rope ladder at the same time, so grab as high as you can and hang on for dear life. Here she comes. Ah, you got hold all right? Right, uh, Got my feet on the lowest rung. How about you? I got a hold with my hands all right. I can't seem to get a foothold. Here. Does that help? Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, I say, we're flapping out here like a shirt tail in a high wind. Uh, breezy, all right. Well, by the way, let's get thrown off this contraption. Remember, we've got plenty of space under us and a couple of parachutes. We're not going to get thrown off. We got a job topside. Yeah. All right. Let's start climbing up to it. Right up. Here we go. Up. Every time you take a foot off the rung, the blasted rope vanishes out in midair. We're making progress. Not much farther now. Coming up on the... We've got the Bombay door open to receive us now. Yeah, I noticed it. We're going to have to act fast. Start knocking heads together the minute we set foot on the solid flooring. Oh, Joe, do I love action. <laughs> You're going to get it. If anyone's too far away to slug, shoot him. But not to kill. Yeah, unless he gets nasty and starts shooting back. They want prisoners, not corpses. Okay. Uh, hey, there's three, no, four heads peering down at us. Uh, all right. Here we go up under and inside. No more conversation now. All right, you men. I took you so long. Come up through the hatch. Did you get away with it? You did, eh? All right. Boys, heat them up. Get a good take, did you? Give them up and close the Bombay and let's get out of here. There you are, boys. Get them, Reggie. Right, right out. <laughs> there we got them, Jack. We met the belly brutes in their eyes. Never mind the historical <laughs> speeches. Tie these birds up while I go and make friends with the pilot. Oh, Jim, I forgot about him. And then get on that radio and let him know in bomb day. Yeah, what shall I say? Anything special? Tell him on schedule, on the beam. Passengers under the weather, but will recover in plenty of time to be hanged. Uh, 
Let's say, Jack, old boy, pick up that telephone, will you? Are you ever going to get out of that bath, Ted? I am, I. Hey, a little jolly good hotel they have here in Bombay. Hello. Oh, hello, Judy. I wondered if I'd lost you for good at the airport. Huh? Yeah. Come right up. Oh, I say, old boy, I don't have on a stitch. Yeah, Reggie's still in the bathroom, but we'll just lock the door. Not at all. I refuse to stay in the bathroom. Right away. Good. I say, is she, is she coming? Right away. Now what are you up to? Uh, hello. Uh, room service? Uh, two pink ladies, some ice and a bottle of seltzer. Yeah. And a pitcher of milk, old boy. Oh, yeah, uh, and a pitcher of milk. Yeah, milk. You don't want the baby to go hungry, do you? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and make it fast. What was that crack about babies? How else can you explain milk to a bartender? Oh, I see. Is that the girl? Close that bathroom door. And keep it closed. Yes, I'm here. And dress for two, I see. Come in. Thank you. Let me take your wrap. Oh, Jack, I know the most wonderful Russian gypsy place on the waterfront. Where two people... Sold. We'll have our drinks and be on our way. Good. Oh, this afternoon when you two men climbed up that ladder to the second plane, I didn't think that tonight and the officials who met us at the airport and took over the prisoners, they were so delighted. Goodness, the town of Bombay is yours tonight, if you wish. Who wants Bombay with you in the vicinity? <laughs> now, say, talk a bit louder. I can't hear very well. Quiet in the bathroom. You going out? Right away. We'll leave the drinks for you. Have a party for yourself. Two pink ladies, seltzer, ice, and a pitcher of milk. See you in the morning. Oh, you know, Jack, this is not a bad life, will you? I quite agree. And I might add, this is the first time I'd ever thought to look for a Russian gypsy hideout on the waterfront of Bombay. I was here only one time before. I remembered the music. The dim light. The pink ladies with bubbles on top. With bubbles on top, she likes them. <laughs> and on the floor above, there's dancing. And a balcony with the booths all closed in where one may watch the moon go down and the morning sun come I up. I see. I see Major Pecot. Oh, no. Oh, what? no, please. Please don't listen. I see Pecot. is most important. Who the blazes are you? No, Jack, don't disappoint me. It's not too late. Send him away. See, you know, chap, there's a most frightful message awaiting you at the consulate. We've been combing Bombay for you. What kind of message? If you don't stop to pack, you can catch the night air express back to London. What? Sergeant York is waiting for you at the airport. Why the rush? <laughs> I can't tell you. That whole secret. Cops and robbers, cloaks and daggers and all that very rough. Not to mention 21 old gentlemen. The 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park? And something about a berserk submarine and piracy rampant. You see. You see, now our night's all shot to ribbons. A girl never gets her innings in this business. You have just heard I Love Adventure, a Carlton E. Morse production featuring Michael Ruffetto as Jack Packard and Tom Collins as Reggie York. Next week, The Devil's Sanctuary, an epic adventure in the South Pacific. Others in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Lal Chand Mera, Everett Glass, Rolf Sedan, Earl Lee, and Don Morrison. The Great Airmail Robbery was written and directed by Carlton E. Morse. Music by Rex Corey. Sound effects by Fred Cole and Robert Conlon. Your announcer, Dresser Dahlstedt. Now, a listening reminder. The clock ticks off 30 minutes of intrigue and excitement. So don't miss another thrilling drama on the clock. Heard tonight over this same ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.